up and the first thing we did was wreck diving. The thing it was sunk, James went in, attached the main halyard to it, and I was supposed to winch it up. And um, then the motor slipped off the dinghy, so now the motor is sinking and it's taken all the main halyard with it because I didn't close the clutch for the main halyard. And so this little thing, the little thing of the dinghy sinking, is just turning into this whole show. And um, we noticed that our main halyard is great um, in one spot, probably where it enters the mast down here. So this has actually a good side. This is the first time this engine sunk, huh? Yeah. This is the beginning of the end. I don't know, I hope not. I think that these are good engines, so it'll be fine. We'll just spray it out really good and then get it running real fast. That way it just burns out all the shit. I need to buy some more WD-40 though. one way to start your day. At least, it can only get better now. There's only three days left here for us before our visas run out. We still have to finish installing the new autopilot and there's still a lot of stuff we want to see before leaving. The volcano Ranukau and the village on its rim. The quarry where the moe were made. The cave of the virgins. And one thing that should be right underneath our boat right now. After searching around a little in the anchorage of Hungaroa, we finally found it. The Underwater Moai. The fact that this statue was made for a movie set didn't make it any less special for us. Because at a depth of 80 feet, this is by far the deepest we have ever dived. Just like most visitors that come to Rapa Nui, we have mostly been looking at sites where there were statues, Moai. But in the 17th century, the Rapa Nui people actually turned away from this megalithic culture. The build and the transportation of these moai was time and very resource intense and caused a lot of deforestation on the island. Natural resources on the island got scarce. Without trees, there was no way of building canoes to go fishing. And without the protection, that was offered by the trees from the wind, other plants had a harder time growing. In a time of dwindling resources and growing conflict, the magic of fertility took on great importance. This new cult found expression in the worship of Makimaki, the creator god, and a very important event, the birdman ceremony, Tangata Manu. This ceremony took place in Orongo, a ceremonial village located on the rim of Ranukau. This was the ceremonial spot that they had the Birdman competition every year. So what they would do is all of the best warriors would compete from all the tribes of the island. They would climb down either here, they're not really sure if it was here, or maybe the crater that is carved out of the um, volcano. But they would climb down and then swim to that island and then live for a week or a month until the, one of them found an egg of the sooty terns that are the migratory birds that, that migrate to the island every year. And he would come back and probably climb back up with the egg in his mouth 
and he would be deemed the champion and he would be a recluse for a year and his tribe would be exalted and he would live up here with the priests and uh, it, it was a big deal for those tribes. This would be a daunting task because it is vertical down. I mean, I think we're at 300 meters, so it's about a thousand feet down vertical climbing both up and down. And then behind me is the houses that would house the people that were waiting for the champion to come back for the Birdman competition. So during this ceremony, people would live up here for a week or two and come, come and check it out the, check out the digs. It's pretty tight. So I don't know if you can see, but it's probably another six feet inside that little cave. And that's the front door. So according to the literature that we read inside the museum, um, a couple of American and British ships came here and they dug up and destroyed the homes to get the paintings inside. And they're never gonna be returned. They have no idea where they went. In other parts of the island, the houses were made from lighter materials, like wood and branches. But here in Orongo, where a stiff breeze is coming from the ocean, even on a calm day like this, something heavier was necessary. There is so much to learn about this rocky and rough island. And we're beyond grateful that we get to experience this and that we get to share this beautiful experience with you guys. And our patrons are getting a video from this morning when our dinghy song. <laughs> That's gonna be fun. Because I, I was, I don't know, I was saying something stupid. I think they're gonna like it. I go along, we were wreck diving this morning. I think they're gonna like that. <laughs> Is that what you said? <laughs> we're wreck diving this morning. Our dinghy <laughs> happens. But that's, that's why you're on the team, right? We're not so only hard. in need, but we're also really entertaining. So if you're not yet a Patreon, you might want to consider. Downtown Hangaroa. The early morning. 8.30 in the morning. Downtown Hangaroa. A young, good-looking couple is waiting on the side of the road. The rains have just stopped and the waves are big. The town is slowly coming to life. Today is a very... Today is a very special day here on Rapa Nui because a ship just arrived from from mainland Chile. A very special ship. It was built in a traditional Polynesian or Rapa Nui way. Um, so there is going to be a big ceremony on the beach, Anakina, where we've anchored before in this episode or that episode. And or maybe this episode. <laughs> or maybe this episode. <laughs> and um, we're going to go see. It's supposed to be dances and the whole freaking um, village is supposed to be there. Like so the whole island is supposed to be island. there. And apparently they've arrived already, so we need to get. A couple of young Rapa Nui people had gone abroad to different Polynesian islands, such as the Marquesas, New Zealand, and Hawaii, to learn more about their shared Polynesian culture. This was the day they returned on a sailboat constructed in southern Chile in a traditional Polynesian way. Their arrival was celebrated by the whole island with ceremonies including dances and speeches by the elders. Hey, Maururu, Tuvaranga, Tempuana, Mana Tahia, Hanga Oku, Hakaroma, Hama, Tameo, Taimana, Topahanga, Otera, Mama.
festivities, there was a great feast offered by the family living on this part of the island. The food, including meat, fish, plantains, and vegetables, was cooked in an underground oven. It is tradition here on Rapa Nui that the families alternate with offerings to the community. And we are very thankful for the privilege of having attended such an event. I just can't get over how a culture this rich was able to develop on an island with such limited resources. I'm in complete awe of the deep astronomical knowledge that the ancient Polynesian navigators possessed and used to cross the Pacific Ocean and to later erect statues in perfect alignment with equinoxes and solstices. What impresses us most as sailors is how the ancient sailors oriented themselves on marine life, currents and clouds to cross the great Pacific Ocean on catamarans that Europeans at the time wouldn't even dream of.